had three, four beautiful days in Zagreb and arrived to Ljubljana. We're very happy to work in a smaller space, especially me, since I don't have to run so much. And um, here we go with Jonas Bears from New York, one of the two people coming from the other continent. And that's it. Can't wait to hear you. Uh, oh, thanks. We just switched cities, so I think we need to thank uh, Cliff again for organizing this festival. So a uh, round of applause, please, for him. And also, oh, keep the applause going also for Derek Holzer, who kept uh, Cliff, I think, grounded and together and answered all of our emails, too. So, um, for, for Derek, yes. Mm -hmm. And for Chris King, too, who... I don't know if we would be here without Chris King. Chris King brought a lot of us together through his blog, Video Circuits, and also his Facebook group, Video Circuits, that many of us, or not all of us, or if not all of us, are members of. Um, and Chris has been doing tech support for all of us, running and getting us cables. He's, he's minimizing his efforts here, as usual. Um, so please, a uh, big round of applause for Chris, too. Thanks. Let's get on to some of the technical stuff. We've been seeing how all these images look. Um, I want to talk a bit about how they're produced and, and hopefully demystify that a bit. Uh, th this, this is lifted from my workshop also. Anytime you see this television screen thing, it's been stolen from my workshop. Um, this is very uh, intuitive to most of us, I think. This is a, an audio waveform. The amplitude, as it gets higher, the signal gets louder. As the waveforms get closer together in time, the pitch increases. All of us understand this. When we see a signal on an oscilloscope, it uh, appears pretty obvious to us how the two are linked. This is a, what a video signal looks like. And this uh, doesn't look like anything to anyone, I don't think. It, it's a crazy thing. There are all these little steps and shadows and shading. And if we look at a simplified version of a video signal, it looks like this. Um, we have uh, porches and uh, black, white, uh, blanking, uh, sink, uh, and here, here's page two. Then we have color. There are all these phase relationships. Um, this, there's nothing intuitive about any of this. I, I want us to focus just for a minute, though, on the sync pulse because this is important, and I think it can be intuitive. Uh, right here is a sync pulse. That's at the beginning of the signal. Um, without sync, none of the color information or the um, brightness information knows where to go. If you have a video signal without sync, it can do things like this. Or if the sync is poor, um, you can lose the frame, and it will start to scroll like this. Or you can get absolutely nothing, um, no signal at all, without the sync. Uh, let's look for a second at how a TV works. This will also be important. Um, here's the back of a cathode ray tube TV. Um, the, that business on the left, the lower left, is an electron gun. And you'll see it's creating scan lines. It's sweeping across horizontally. And it also knows um, when to be dark and when to be bright. So each scan, the scan lines all together can construct an image. This is happening very, very, very quickly so that we see the illusion of movement. You can see up in the top left, there's a little sawtooth wave that's being formed. And that's how the coils are controlled. They're following the pattern of that, of that oscillation. Yes, and continue. Um, this is... Uh, what a line of video um, looks like really, really simply. We have all these up and down, kind of jagged looking things. And then there's a pulse. So we have a pulse and then information that tells the beam how bright to be. So hopefully that's um, demystified a little bit. You can see at the beginning of each line, there's a pulse and then a line with uh, varying bright and dark. Uh, if we look at this now, hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. We see a pulse and then information in a monochromatic signal about um, what is dark and what is light. If we took these two images, instead of making them side by side, flipped them forward, and then put the one on the right underneath the one on the left, we'd have two lines of video. 
if we lined up uh, many of them, then we'd have a whole frame. Uh, here's, here's a diagram of that again. H-sync pulse, sweep, scan line, retrace back to the beginning. H-sync pulse, scan line, retrace back to the beginning. We get to the bottom. Uh, there's another pulse. It tells us where the end of the frame is. Then the entire thing starts over again. Um, simplified, all right, um, on the X, uh, across, scan line, retrace, scan line, retrace. Uh, this continues over and over again, and it makes this kind of pattern. Uh, we get rid of the TV, and we just look at it this way, um, put it on its side, um, and then look at it on an oscilloscope screen. Uh, we, we have a sawtooth waveform. Um, if the, we plug a sawtooth waveform into um, one of, the, one of our uh, channels, this is what we'd expect to see on the oscilloscope. Um, we can listen to that. Let's hear it. Um, it's a very fast signal. Let's see if we can hear it. Who has good hearing? Can you hear it? Who can hear it? Raise your hand. Can everyone hear it? Cliff, no? It's too loud. Amplifiers. <laughs> you got to tune into it. Tune into it. Um, children can always hear it, and adults um, sometimes lose it. So it's going so fast. Um, if, if, if we would have to be zoomed way in to be able to see it like this. Uh, so back to, back to our drawing. Uh, we're going to look at the other signal, too. We also have Y. Um, so uh, when we get to the bottom of the frame, the Y is much slower. It's, uh, it's, it takes forever to get all the way back up to the top. Um, and we can listen to that, too. Let's see who can hear this one. you hear that? Cliff, you hear it? Okay, <laughs> good. Um, that's a little bit slower. Um, so that's an audio rate. We can hear that. Uh, so this is when it gets exciting. Okay, we got our Y um, on the scope. Let's flip it around, right? Good. Yep. Um, we're going to plug Y into input 2. We're down there, moving slowly. Uh, let's bring back X. Um, put that on the scope 2. Booyah! Um, now, this isn't quite a television signal. Um, we're going to need to come in and hit our XY button, get into XY mode. And now, look at that. Um, it's amazing. We have television on an oscilloscope, um, which is pretty mind-blowing to me. This is sort of the basis of the Red Etra. We're plugging signals into an oscilloscope that just can move a beam around on an X and Y axis in XY mode. Get out of here. You're OK, good. Um, and that is how television works. And um, we can also plug other signals in on top of those and start um, making some interesting things. Um, what's really exciting is that these kind of devices can make all those signals. Uh, that is a basic function of many synthesizers, being able to make those sawtooth waves. Maybe not um, sawtooth waves that are this fast, but um, sawtooth waves nonetheless. Um, any synthesizer can probably make that sound. Same thing. Um, it is so basic. Uh, we, you know, we see people walking around with these waveforms on T-shirts. But now you can look at it like this and say, OK, look, it's frame rate. He's wearing um, sideways frame rate. Um, OK, people that have been following the festival and been paying attention, um, we have looked at a lot of Vectrex monitors. Um, and you'll look at more Vectrex monitors tonight, too. Um, and Vectrex, Vectrex monitors are awesome. Um, they have a really fine, um, beautiful point, and they are uh, the beam. And uh, they have a nice wide screen. And you may be thinking it would look really beautiful to get your keyboard and plug it into a Vectrex and make video on it. Um, also, uh, we've been seeing lots of Batman and Robin pictures um, throughout this. So I'd like to, con continuing on that theme, um, uh, no. you. <laughs> You, you cannot make video on a Vectrex. Um, it uh, is not fast enough. The bandwidth is not high enough. That fast signal that I was playing, the, um, the Vectrex cannot keep up with that. Uh, we also sell lasers. Um, and you may think, um, laser, it's much brighter. Um, it must be fast enough to make video. Um, and that is where you'd be wrong again. No, uh, you cannot. Lasers are even slower. They're slower than a Vectrex. 
um, they're controlled by a physical coil, and if you tried to run it at that speed, um, not that I've tried this, uh, it smells really bad and it, it burns up expensive galvanometers. So, if we, so let's convince Robin to get an oscilloscope. Um, now he's psyched and he's going to take his laptop and plug it into the oscilloscope and make some video. Um, nope. <laughs> uh, the laptop, um, Cliff is going to show us. It's, it, it can do a lot. Um, yeah. It, we're going to see it. We're going to see it. Um, it's, it's great um, that we're uh, talking together because uh, it, can do, it can do something. Um, and the Vectrex, all these things can do something. The, um, the, the laptop can make an approximation of video with fewer scan lines. Uh, so let's give Robin his good old modular synth, and now he's going to grab his oscilloscope and make some video. Nope. Um, uh, the problem with an oscilloscope is that it has two inputs, usually, X and Y. And we also need, there's no more slapping, I promise. Trigger warning, I should have said trigger warning. Uh, we need a Z input. This is the back of a vector display monitor, and you can see there's X, Y, and also Z. And Z, Z is what controls the brightness as it makes scan lines. So uh, we need that brightness information, that weird, um, cool looking curve to go into the Z input so that we can have video. So if we look at the block diagram of the red etra, um, you can see kind of how this works. We have our um, H ramp and our V ramp over there on the left. They're going into um, this kind of analog computing um, series of events. Uh, the X's stand for multipliers or multiplication, and the pluses stand for addition. Um, and up at the top, we have the video uh, going into a sync separator. That helps us uh, time the ramps. If we, if we didn't have sync for the ramps, the image would be scrolling all over the place. And then um, up at the top also, we have the video going to the CRT beam to control the brightness of it. Um, so I hope, I mean, looking at this without any of that knowledge, it might be very difficult to understand, but hopefully you can get a, a piece of it now. Um, and that, that's kind of what I've done with my system. Taking, taking a video input from this mixer and plugging it into a modular synth, taking out the sync, using the sync to control very fast oscillators, the ones that you were listening to, and time them, and then sending those to the scope. Uh, but then also sending the ramps through not just these uh, transformations uh, at the bottom, but all sorts of other stuff too. So like Bill was saying, we have um, total plasticity of the image, and we can do all sorts of things with it. Um, oh, and now I'm going to demonstrate a little bit. Okay, cool. Whoops. So I'm turning on the scope. And the scope is receiving those ramps. Um, we have a little video raster, a collection of scan lines. And the brightness information is coming from this video mixer. So if I turn the video mixer on with a shape, we could have a circle output from the video mixer. And the circle is being displayed on the oscilloscope. Uh, one of the classic effects that you can do with this kind of setup is we have these three signals. We have the X and the Y that are controlling the scan lines, and then we have the Z that's contro controlling the brightness. And if we apply some of the brightness information to the, to the horizontal axis or to the vertical ax axis, we get this kind of displacement effect. Hey, hi. Uh, where, the, where the bright parts appear to protrude from the background. And uh, then using all of our analog computing techniques, we can sort of move the brightness around in different ways and, and modulate it, um, which is pretty neat. Uh, I'll show you some other things. We got color bars here. Um, and the color bars, as they go from dark to light, from right to left, you can see as they get brighter and brighter and brighter, they protrude like, like stairs. Um, coming down from the background. Uh, cool. Steps. Uh, if I have just a white background, okay, let's turn up the scope a little bit so we can see. 
just a white background. As it gets brighter and brighter and brighter, the image protrudes more and more and more. If we use a gradient, it's lighter at the bottom, it's sticking out, it's darker at the top, and it gives us this kind of uh, ramp looking waveform. Cool. So let's see how am I doing on time. Oh, not too bad. I, I wanted to give people a chance to come up and, and touch some of the machines. So I'm going to skip through the rest of this as quick as I can. I'll just show you a little bit of my work. Um, this is stuff that I've made with this, um, with this and a couple other things. Um, here's a kind of um, pixelized diamond shape moving around. And it, uh, I like this one because you get a, a lot of that depth effect. Um, this is uh, a video. Video is being displayed on the wings of this dragonfly. Uh, and as it goes faster and faster and faster, video is displayed along the sides um, where it's flapping really fast. Um, so it gets, it gets kind of sculptural at this point. Um, uh, these kinds of uh, things like this. where uh, the displacement texture and the raster are sort of moving independently of each other and going through some complex calculations and also receiving complex video signals um, and also making still images like this. Uh, this is two independent rasters, um, one of them unprocessed, the corner of my eye, and one um, processed, a digitized version. Uh, I also use these tools in performance. Um, this is a performance where um, some people were brave enough to, they had to wear hospital booties. You can see some of the booties there. Um, some of the brave, brave people could actually sit inside the installation while I was performing. You can see on the right wall, um, there's a video signal that is controlling how fast the beam is moving. And uh, then the beam is displayed on the, the wall and the floor. Um, and here you can see there's, there are light and dark textures on the wall. That's um, the original image. And then the sort of like ret, ret etra images on the wall and floor. Um, it's uh, v very old analog technology, but um, looking at this, to me, it looks like it's um, protruding from the wall. It gets a um, pretty intense 3D effect. Um, this is made with something a little bit different from an oscilloscope. Um, it's made with um, one of these machines. This is a, a Folsom stroke to raster converter that I think was used in flight simulators when um, the military was changing over from old tubes like this to flat screens. They needed a way to get all this analog information from their old equipment into uh, VGA monitors. So this machine will take all the analog information and then instead of using a scope, you get a VGA signal coming out. And this is how that looks. Um, it's a little more crisp, uh, a little colder, more precise. Um, here's some other, uh, other things I did with the stroke to raster. Nice and clean. Um, and I, I did a, a lot of tests um, side by side, displaying the image on a, a nice big analog scope and then also on, on uh, this is a, a digital flat screen monitor with that same image on it. It's neat seeing them side by side. Huh? There is no conclusion. I guess the conclusion is like, um, okay, that, that's a good question. No, 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 no. Um, I, I, think it, I think it ties into what I was saying about Bill. You know, it's like an analog and digital are both good at different things. And uh, there are some situations where you may prefer this, and there are some situations where you may prefer that. And I think it's important as people using these tools that we pay attention to what uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the tools are. Um, in this, uh, I assumed that I would prefer Lisa Ju figures on the analog scope, but I, I liked it better on the stroke to raster converter. Um, the, the scope looks a little kind of dirty and too grainy for me, and I really liked all the moiré that was appearing on the stroke to raster. So, oh, whoops, what happened? Uh, I found, I'm, I'm going to close with um, something poetic 
about all this stuff. And then hopefully we'll have a few minutes just to play around with the tools while we switch over. Analog televisions line our curbs and dumpsters, each a tiny universe in a glass vacuum. Inside, an electron gun emits a particle at nearly the speed of light, firing it through an electro electrostatic field that bends its trajectory, guiding it to strike a phosphor screen and illuminate a, price, a precise point at a precise time, organized into dozens of patterns per second, the illusions of a moving image. The physical forces that bind our existence sealed in a cathode ray tube unplugged and discarded, its images now faded. Scan processing breaks the phosphor beam from its two-dimensional grid and allows it to flow freely, traveling in slow arcs and bright circles. By manipulating the flow of electrical current, the tight coordinate systems used for video become endlessly sculptural planes in, in Euclidean space. Without content, systems designed to broadcast programming are left only to demonstrate the principles that permit their very existence the same elemental principles inside ourselves, the forces that govern the cosmos, and the language of our universe. And that was by me. Um, <laughs> um, this was my artist statement. Hold on, uh, hold, your, hold your applause, hold your applause. You'll know, you'll know. Um, this was for my issue project room residency application um, that was rejected. Okay, <laughs> Vector Hack, yay. Okay, now you can applaud. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay, it is, it's 10 after 9. I'd like to take some questions, but I also, is it possible to let people touch the equipment? Would it, yes? Okay, cool. Um, cool, all right, who wants to play with it? Come on up here. No one, no takers. Come on, get up here. Come on.